The Ukraine forms the southwest corner of Russia. Through it flows the fourth largest river in Europe, the Dnieper. This river holds one of the greatest engineering accomplishments in the world. On our way to the famous Lenin Dam, we pass quaint Ukrainian villages. In the Ukraine, we find a healthy, robust type of people. They are happy and active. They are great lovers of music and the dance. And at the least provocation, you will find groups that are gathering to sing to the accompaniment of their native bailalakas and to dance to the rhythms of their own folk songs. find lovely landscapes, and there is a poetic quality to their villages. Neat little thatched huts are kept clean with whitewashed walls and gardens of sweet-smelling flowers. There is something about the people here that resembles the smooth-flowing river on its way to the sea, quiet and peaceful, but determined. Ten years ago, dangerous rapids blocked the central portion of the Dnieper. With unceasing force, the waters plunged down over the jagged rocks, between the forests on one side and the hills on the other. The famous writer Gogol described its beauties almost a century ago. But these same rapids paralyzed shipping for over a distance of 100 miles. They actually divided the river into two separate halves. Here, one of the great dreams, first of Catherine the Great and later of Lenin, has come true. They dreamed of locking the foaming river with a gigantic wall of cement and steel, raising the water level to cover the rapids and harnessing the great water pressure thus created to spin huge dynamos that would give electric light and power to the whole countryside. Alexandrov, one of Russia's greatest engineers, was summoned and he worked out the plans for the vast project. American engineers were brought to Russia and they in turn brought American machinery and American methods. Great masses of rock were blown from the mountainsides. Thousands of tons of sand were sucked up to buy dredges from the river bottom. to transport all of this directly to the site of the dam. Tens of thousands of Russians worked and swarmed like ants, and slowly but surely, the dam began to take form. must eat. Here again, American methods came into play. Spacious mess halls were constructed. In the kitchens, the most modern American equipment enabled them to feed 10,000 workers at a time. Now those who scoffed at this audacious dream not only enjoy electric lights instead of tapers, but they see riverboats plying from the Black Sea the full length of the river. For in addition to the dam, locks raise and lower the ships with their rich cargoes of oil, fruits, and grain in three great steps from one level to the other. Now on the left bank of the river has been formed a great industrial combine utilizing the power created by the dam. At Donnay's Basin, we find the headquarters of the American engineers. At this point, there are vast deposits of coal and iron, rock salt, and manganese. These men give not only their advice, but their vast store of knowledge gained through experience 
and their time. For years, they worked shoulder to shoulder with the Russians to develop these natural resources. Here in the very heart of Russia, we find a truly American colony. The homes are built by Americans. They have their own schools and churches and apartment houses. The children play American games, and because of the many years spent here, life takes on the aspect of an average American community. 